On this episode of The Sequence, I'll show you how to make some 808s inside of the Akai MPC Live XO1 that go boom. The Sequence. All right, so this can go extremely good or extremely bad. Uh, just let me know how you feel about it in the comments section because I'm sure you will let me know. So let's go ahead and play the example track of an 808 that I made from scratch. So I made this in a way actually using a VST plugin called Sublab, which will be linked in the description box. I will also have the pack where you can purchase it and it helps support this channel. Uh, and it comes with like, I believe 48 weights or whatnot. They're all around the same type of style as this one right here. So yeah, it's worth it. I use it all the time, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is make that kind of 808 inside of the MPC in standalone. So that's very possible to do. Uh, the first thing I need to do though is access the plugin program. So just access the plugin program yourself. Uh, make sure that you hit the plus sign because that's always a good idea to hit the plus sign to have a new uh, program ready to go so you don't have any uh, program overlapping and mess something up. So I'm going to go ahead and access the plugins because I need to select my MPC drum plugins. And one specific one at that is called drum synth. And yeah, we're gonna use drum synth kick. So now that we have drum synth kick here, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is this right here. Uh, one thing I notice about drum synth is the level that you would have to transpose it for it to be active. And right now it's out of tune and that's cool. So hit your program edit button on your MPC one on the live and X. I believe, well, the X has a program edit button, or it should at least, all those buttons. But the live, you would just have to hit uh, your menu button and then this pad right here. Or you can do it on here too as well on the one. But yeah, so now we're in here. You have this kick. That's very akin to this kick on here. That's why that model is called 80. So. You know, this is supposed to be a TR-808, but this is the boutique version uh, that I got from, uh, I bought a while ago, and no comment. I like it, by the way. But, yeah, so, you have different models. You have 90s. You have Driven 8. Sounds cool. Hybrid. Trance. Natural A. Natural B. Hard 1. Hard 2 and clipped. So I'm going to go back to 80. Now, the main thing that you need to know is you can navigate this UI via the Q-Links. So let's go ahead and navigate to the Q-Links and let's start with this tab right over here or this part of the UI, uh, which has tune. So tune is already on G and you need your 808s to be tuned to C. So the next thing that I need to tell you about is hold. So what does hold sound like? So hold sounds like this when it's on zero. If you have it all the way to the right, if you boost it, it will hold a little bit longer, but there's also a category called decay. And I find that to be more effective because if you have less decay, more like a kick. Now you have more decay, more like an 808, right? Boom. So. There's another category called sweep, which adds a little bit of a kick to it naturally. Now I've worked with this sweep and thinking I could get an 808 to really have that Zaytoven, Pierre Bourne type bounce, but no, I, it just didn't work. So uh, you have harmonics here and harmonics is pretty decent. Just gives you a little bit more play at a higher register gives you more harmonics obviously and now you have click you 
you hear it gives you a click not necessarily my cup of tea uh, then you have noise you'll hear a little bit of it now but you'll hear more of it when I uh, introduce this parameter which is noise C O L which I don't know like different noise I guess that means noise collection I don't know but yeah nonetheless we're not gonna use noise uh, we're not gonna use harmonic well we'll use a little bit of harmonic but now we have an 808 let's hit it now I'll bring that back into the track here It sounded good so far. So let's go back into program edit so we can get back to it. There are other things that you can do to this and make sure that you keep up with your effects because you have to turn them on. I know a lot of people, they say, oh, the effects aren't working. And I'm like, dude, you got to actually turn them on. Get that complaint all the freaking time in my freaking email. Guys, relax. So uh, the next thing, again, with transient, you have... Uh, two different kinds of transients. You, I, I want to explain it like this. So you have logarithmic that has like this sweeping part to it. And you can kind of change the attack to be kind of wide like that. Or even like this right here, uh, which is, I believe, exponential. I'm, I'm not necessarily sure. It's been a while since I've really been into the sound design world where I can explain stuff like that. But uh, you modular guys know what I know the vibes, okay? So let's go ahead and click over here. Let's hear the attack. Let's hear that with the beat. Mm. And I'm messing with the shape. And you can hear it kind of transform. Let's go ahead and just bring that back into the beat. You can hear that it doesn't have that one thing in the 808 that's going to make it have that bounce. And we're going to get to that. I know I, I, it's a lot to explain. So now we have distortion. And yes, the main thing you want to do is make sure that the mix is all the way up so you can hear it. Or you can have it at 50% and just kind of parallel your, your distortion. But let's go ahead and mess with appreciate so we can hear it. Oh, well, I need to turn it on. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go over here. You add more drive, get more distortion. Uh, threshold, let's hear that. starting to sound yummy so what I want to do is go to this right here which is the high cut so you can actually turn take away some of that extra higher frequency content with the high cut and also there's mix so you can you know It's always good just to have a little bit of distortion for your 808 so it can hold a little bit better. Um. Yeah, just a experiment here. So we're gonna go over here to EQ because I wanna demonstrate that there is an EQ. It's a four band EQ and you can further add or take away stuff. So we're already in the gain area. So when you add gain, you're adding whatever it is. So if you're adding gain to the lower frequency, it will sound like this right here. Let's actually use the right Q link. And 
and you can, you know, sweep the frequency. So if you want to tighten up like the lower frequency, have a little slope or whatnot, it's not the best visual uh, experience because you have to use your ears, obviously. But nonetheless, though, it's still there and you can do whatever you want. Uh, and you also can choose to change uh, the cue, which the quartz, uh, the, you can make it asymmetrical, bell shaped or so forth. Uh, if you want to do that, I don't add a, any compression. I'm going to take the EQ out too as well. Now, uh, onto the thing that matters the most in this video, and that is the sampler. So, uh, what I want to show you, and let's go from the very beginning here, because you have access to like input one and two, and that's not what you want. You want to go for a resample. So, let's go ahead and resample the left part. You can resample left or right, or left and right if you want to do that. But I try to stay and keep things mono so that you have a transient uh, that is consistent. That's the reason why I do that. Uh, with the sampler, too, as well, you can add, insert any effect that you want, of course. And I just want to make sure that you do that. But there is one thing that we're not going to use. We're not going to arm this or do any of the sampling from here. And that's because we have access to one feature right here. Let's go in the main. Let's go ahead and change plugin eight. Let's, let's make plugin eight a name here. Uh, let's call that AV808. Boom. Boom. Uh, and now we're going to go back into the sampler. And we're accessing this right here. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me, let me go ahead and do that again. Let me go ahead and do that again here. And this is auto sampler. So the auto sampler is going to uh, bring a lot to the table. So from the very beginning here, you can see the track name, the program name. And I have a video where I explain how the auto sampler works in detail. So uh, just in case, just to save time here, uh, you can choose the minimal note to the max note. Right now is C2 to a C4. Uh, you got to keep that in mind as well so that you don't do anything crazy. Note stride, uh, I believe if you have it on six, it will take up less hard drive space or less, yeah, less hard drive space, but you get less quality. So uh, if you have it on one, it will sample almost every single uh, note as it goes. So I don't think it's really important for the 808 that we're going to do. Uh, and we only have one layer right now. So yeah, that's one thing that I want to point out there. And then you can rename your stuff right here. So I'm going to keep it at app 808 auto sample. Uh, you can choose the looping point if you want it to be reverse alternating or you can turn it off. I'm going to just go ahead and just leave a looping point there. Oh, actually, no, I don't want a looping point. I, I just turn it off. So, yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, auto trim start and make current program uh, on completion. Let's go ahead and make it the current program because we will use this. And if I mess up, we'll find out later. So let's hit do it. And it'll go through the sampling process. So it's auto sampling this. I'm gonna turn the transpose up so we can have something that makes sense. All right, so there are a few things that we need to adjust in program editing of this key group. So the first thing we need to do is adjust uh, the levels here, we got note on, let's do the one shot. And now we need to turn the polyphony. Are you happy I said polyphony, right? Polyphony. <laughs> we need to turn the polyphony down to mono. So, you know, cause 808 doesn't need like chords and whatnot. And you'll notice, and I'm going to make sure that you guys see this because it's very important because you hear a lot of the clicking. You see that it's on note on on certain notes. Uh, I don't know why they chose to do it like that on on certain instances of like anything. <laughs> So I need to go up, let's go up on semitone, so you just hit your bank and just set it up. I don't know, it's one of those rare bugs that it has. But I, you guys of the Akaya community, I know y'all will let them know. Ricky Tina is get on a video about how horrible the Akaya is. MP 
Ricky Tinez, go ahead and make your Akai is so horrible for having bugs this right here video. I know you would do it. So now we have everything adjusted. The next thing I want to do is layer this 808 because it needs that punch. Now you could do that with the sweep, but again, like I said, it just doesn't sound right. And especially with the click either. I don't know. Maybe you guys will find something out. So I'm in layer two. I'm on the sample tab and let's go ahead and grab, which I know something that I already know exists in this project. So I have a kick that I want to layer with it. And how's the sound now? Just make sure. So let's go ahead and layer that kick on to every track. So let's make sure that it's like that on every track here. I see that it is kind of depicted on different things. These are this is all different than what I normally would do. Let's go ahead and just add it anyway. So add it some more and just make sure you do the same. Go back into bank A. So let's hear it on the track so far. we have that kick layer in there what I want to do is this I want to go and make sure that I can adjust the levels I don't want to do anything random to it or anything like that so I'll just go and hit the Q link and just adjust that level here damn and so now that we have that going we can you know just keep on moving forward and keep going with the sound design because what I want to do is just mess with the amplitude envelope because I, I don't want it to be so long. Maybe I could have. <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, yeah, so I don't want it to be so long, but I do want to adjust the decay a little bit. So let's go ahead and mess with the Q links and uh, mess with the decay of the sample. One thing I did notice is that you can adjust the key groups in all and then like one or two, or you can choose whatever key group you want to use. Yeesh, I didn't, eh, I, I covered it in this video. So, but back to the, the envelope, uh, let's go ahead and make some proper adjustments to it. So uh, let's mess with the decay, bring it back a little bit. So now that we mess with that, let's mess with some effects. I could, yeah, let's, let's add a little bit of portamento to it. Why not? Let's quantize it. You can do that to your 808s now. Mm. Uh, I can, you know, mess with other things. So let's transpose it down. Yeah, that 
that is a tasty 808 there. So, tell me how you feel about this video. Yeah, huh. Well, I've been making 808s for quite a while. I either do it in sub lab and this was probably my first video where I do 808 sound design inside of the MPC Live X01, which I did in the one that go bow, that like just really slap. And I think for my first try, I, I nailed it a little bit, I guess. Uh, just let me know in the comment section if I nailed it. And also, again, links in the description box if you are interested in buying an MPC Live X01. Well, use the links in the description box to help support my channel at no additional cost to you. And my 808 pack is in there as well. And I'll probably just let me know if you want me to do an 808 pack or a key group for the MPC Live X01.